Right, and uh, last but not least, we've got uh, Kevin Hazard Horsborough, who's going to be talking about protecting the coastal zone. So last but least, apparently giving that initial vote. Um, the, the ocean is deadly. It, is, it presents us with some of the biggest threats and risks that we have to deal with, and there are just a couple of examples. Uh, the famous uh, Boxing Day tsunami, 2004, over a quarter of a million people died, another half a million people were injured. Coastal livelihoods were destroyed right throughout the Indian Ocean. The Sri Lankan fishing industry took over five years to recover because 70% of the fleet were destroyed. Um, in the Caribbean, uh, hurricanes quite routinely cause havoc. In 2017, that was one of the worst hurricane seasons the Caribbean has ever had. There were over 3,400 <coughs> and 300 a billion American dollars of damage. And that picture there shows a, a road in Dominica that's been destroyed by the, the waves and the storm surge, which is the effect that the weather has on the sea surface, uh, bringing the sea up by more than, more than five to 10 meters in some cases. If you look at all of the natural hazards around the world, uh, the ocean and weather are responsible for the majority of them. So the blue bars there are natural hazards that are due to weather or flooding, the others are due to earthquakes, wildfires, uh, and such like. So it's the, um, it's the watery environment along with the atmosphere that causes the vast majority of these hazards worldwide. And here are some factoids. Um, it's getting worse because we're exposing ourselves to the coast more and more. Uh, at the moment, more than 200 million people live um, dangerously close to sea level, and by the end of this century, it's thought to be that that will fall to double to about half a billion people. Uh, so we put ourselves in, at risk of the ocean um, around the world, and we need to combat that through effective knowledge, warning systems, and protection. Um, the losses financially are getting worse for the same reason, and we carry on building our mega cities by the coast. At the moment, 14 out of 17 cities with populations of more than 10 million people are by the coast and vulnerable. One of the biggest um, components of this risk is sea level rise. Sea level rise is increasing the flood risk from tsunamis, from waves and storm surges because all the time it's slowly raising the level of the sea so that those perhaps more energetic hazards are closer to the, closer to the buildings, closer to people and they can do more damage. There are some parts of the world where sea level rise will actually cause an abandonment of the places where people live in the South Pacific, oops, say, um, over several generations. So it's a global threat, but don't think it's just a threat that affects poor countries. <coughs> this is in the USA, Hurricane Katrina, still the most damaging uh, hurricane of all time. Over 1,800 people died in New Orleans. <coughs> hurricane Sandy uh, in New Jersey in 2012, again, caused tremendous damage. These, this is affecting the, the wealthiest nation in the world, um, and they're not prepared for this, and that's maybe why nobody put their hand up at the front. But it affects us as well. The, the biggest natural disaster that this country has ever seen happened back in a cold winter in 1953, over the 31st of January, 1st of February. A huge storm surge came down the North Sea. It killed over 300 people in England, in East Anglia, Lincolnshire, um, in the Thames Estuary. It killed 1,800 people in the Netherlands, which is why we have the Thames Barrier today, and other European nations have systems of coastal defences. The sea level is making this worse. Sea level is gradually rising due to climate change. This is some work from one of our NSC colleagues. The different colour lines show the possible routes that we're on with regards to our, our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the red one is the optimistic, keep the temperature down at one and a half degrees. The purple line is the things carry on as the way they are now. And if we follow this purple line trajectory, then coastal flooding could cost the UK um, over 10% of our GDP uh, by the year 2100. And we still don't know the whole story about sea level rise. There are processes that happen in the Antarctic and Greenland about the way the ice sheets collapse that science is still beginning to understand. And these so-called ice sheet instability mechanisms could make sea level rise even faster than we currently think. And that's why when the Environment Agency released their strategy um, last week, and this is the same picture that Russia showed, there's an acknowledgement now that we can't afford to protect everything that we currently do. And there are some places in the UK, that's Hemsby, um, where coastal erosion is literally making houses fall into the sea. So sea level rise and the hazards that we face through storm surges and wave are only going to get worse. The work we do here provides really vital evidence about understanding the rate of change, 
understanding how sea level rise um, could get worse over the next century, developing effective warning systems so that we can protect people, so that we can put plans in place. And lots of this work in the shape of papers then feeds into uh, syntheses like the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which makes these recommendations to government because there's no such thing as a natural disaster. There's a natural hazard, but the work we can do here makes sure that natural hazards don't become natural disasters. Thanks very much.